Hello and welcome to the fifth module of our CCNA training. So we are over the halfway point and uh, today I just wanted to give you a little bit more practice with subnetting. Um, we covered some of the uh, subnetting basics last time. I wanted to give you guys some more uh, detailed analyses and some shortcut methods and some uh, network design question examples that uh, we can go over. So uh, first I want to talk to you about the information that you will need to find uh, with a given address and subnet mask. So you should be able to determine all of these. You should be able to determine what type of address uh, you're looking at. You should be able to determine what class of network it falls under. You should be able to determine what the subnet uh, network address is. You should be able to determine how many subnets and how many addresses uh, in each subnet for the given subnet mask. You should be able to determine the host address. Um, you should be able to determine the number of hosts in each subnet and uh, the address ranges that that correspond to. Um, and you should also be able to determine the broadcast address for that particular subnet. Um, so as you can see, we've got a, quite a variety of information here, um, and it seems kind of daunting at first, especially when you want to do uh, decimal to binary conversion. And so I'm going to show you guys today a little bit of a shortcut. So um, I'm going to get into this decimal shortcut. Um, basically, I think the best way to present this is to give an example, but I'm going to try to give an overview of it here as much as I can. Um, so for the class A, B, and C subnet masks, these masks fall on an octet and so you don't really have to do any sort of calculations you can look at the subnets you can determine oh my number of network bits is you know this many more and you can basically manipulate your subnets and your host bits independently uh, you don't have to worry about recalculating these things but when you're dealing with uh, decimal subnet masks that fall in between it's more uh, it's easier to look at only the interesting octet. In other words, if the break does not fall between two octets, we want to look at the octet where the break does fall. And we're going to look at the number of host bits in that octet to determine um, the, uh, basically that will give us a magic number that we can use to determine a lot of the relevant network information. Um, so let's look at an example of this. I can't really, like I said, it's kind of hard to give get anything from the overview, so I actually just want to do an example for you. Um, so we, here we have a Class C network, just looking at the 192, immediately I know Class C. Um, and then I have a different subnet mask. This is actually a bit of an interesting subnet mask because you'll notice it doesn't fall on an octet. The uh, break from ones to zeros happens somewhere in the last octet, it looks like. So um, the initial class C, the network address for this is going to be 192.168.26.0. But you'll notice this particular subnet is going to be a little bit different. Um, in this case, we look at the interesting octet, and that interesting octet is where the break occurs, so last octet, 248. Um, you should be able to convert these uh, in-between values. All of it, You should basically have those in-between values memorized, and you should be able to convert 248 in your head. You should know, um, you should have that memorized, that that is five ones. Um, and so you should have, for example, 240, you should have memorized that 240 is four ones. You should have memorized that uh, 128 is only one one. You should have memorized that 192 is two ones, and so on. Um, so basically, you should memorize these intermediate values and determine how many ones and how many zeros in each octet. So in this case, we're looking at 248, and you'll notice that there are five ones in 248, um, and that leaves us with three host bits. Um, and so that three host bits, that three is going to give us our magic number uh, when we raise two to that power. So two to the three is eight, and in this case, eight is the magic number. And what this number tells us is how the subnets increment in steps. Um, so basically, this is going to tell us that subnets will fall, the subnetworks will fall on multiples of eight. And in this case, uh, so just looking at the network 192.168.26.0, our first subnet will be the zero subnet. Our second subnet will be dot eight. Again, this is not a host address. This is actually a network address because that eight falls on the fourth bit. Um, in the in the uh, coming from lowest order to highest, um, and so this dot sixteen will be the next network. These are all subnets, so these are all the net possible networks. And there will actually be a total of we look at the number of ones in the uh, interesting octet, and we figure out that there are five of those there. And in this case, there are five subnet bits uh, being borrowed from the host portions. In this case, there will be two to the fifth. That's thirty two subnets. Again, if this were uh, if zero subnetting and if broadcast subnetting were not allowed for RFC 950, this would be 30 subnets, uh, if should you encounter a question like that. Um, and there will be 2 to the 3rd minus 2, that's 6 hosts per subnet. Again, our magic number is 2 to the 3rd, that's that 8, and that's based on the number of host bits in this interesting octet. So to continue from on there, uh, the multiple, basically we look at the multiple of 8 above and below our um, 
address that we're given. Um, so the lowest multiple of 8 below 67, if you'll notice that last octet was dot .67, so I'm looking for a multiple of 8 that's below 67, and the closest one that I can find is dot .64. So our subnet address is going to be at dot .64. And we look at the next multiple above that, that is 72. And that will determine, uh, this will help us determine our broadcast address. It won't be the broadcast address, it's actually going to be the next subnet. And if we subtract one, that will get us our broadcast address. So our broadcast address for this subnet is going to be 71. Um, so our subnet address in this case is dot .64, as I mentioned, with a slash 29 subnet mask. Again, take note, this is not a host address, this is a network address, because the subnet mask is slash 29. All of the host bits, if you convert 64 uh, into binary, all of the host bits will be set to zero. Um, and the hosts are going to go from the next one up, from that 65, all the way up to one less than the broadcast address. Now we said that the next subnet was at dot .72, so this broadcast address would be at dot .71, which would make the biggest host at dot .70, which is why I have 70 at this, as the high end of that uh, host's range. And then our broadcast address, like I mentioned, is dot .71. Um, and again, this is a lot easier than trying to convert 67 into binary, trying to set the bits to zero, trying to convert back to 64, get your 64, trying to set all the host bits to one, and then convert back to get 71. It's a lot faster to just use these multiples, these magic numbers. Um, and so let's do another example. So to do another quick example, um, we have 172.133.17. And you'll notice that the interesting uh, octet in this case is not the last octet, as it was in the previous example, but the third octet, and that's 192. And so if we convert 192 to binary, um, or if you have it memorized, you'll know that 192 is two ones, which means you have six host bits, six zeros. Um, and the, again, uh, we're looking when we're looking at the magic number, we're only looking at the number of host bits in that octet. You'll notice there are a grand total of 14 host bits because there's an additional octet, there are additional eight zeros um, in that last octet that we're not accounting for here. But just looking at the 192, just looking at that third octet alone, we have six host bits in that octet. And so that's going to give us our magic number as to the sixth or 64. So our subnets are going to go in multiples of 64. And so we're going to have four subnets. That's determined by the number of network bits, or part, no, pardon me, the number of subnet bits in this case. Um, we're going to have 2 to the 14th minus 2 hosts per subnet. And where did I get that 14? Again, we have six host bits in this octet. We have eight more in the last octet, which gives us a grand total of 14. And then we have to subtract the two for the network and broadcast addresses. Our overall network is going to be 172.16.0.0. That's determined by the classful uh, scheme. This particular subnet, we look at the lowest multiple of 64, or pardon me, the biggest multiple of 64 below 133. And the only multiple of 64 below 133, the closest one there, is going to be 128. So our subnet number is going to be 128. We add 64 to that. Our next subnet's going to be, I believe it's going to be 192. Um, looking at this host range, because you'll notice the host range goes from 128.1 all the way to 191.254 and then 191.255 because the next subnet falls at 192.0. So again, I'm going from the subnet address, which is 172.16.128, and then if you look at the next subnet down on the, the two lines below that, the next subnet is 64 more. That's where that magic number comes into play. And so you can derive the broadcast address by subtracting one uh, from the uh, overall addressing scheme. And with a class B address, you'll notice that doesn't subtract one from that octet. That just subtracts one in general. Um, so that only lowers it by 255 and 191. Um, and then the address, the uh, hosts fall in between those two addresses. So as you can see, the decimal method makes it a little bit easier. Um, and so now we're going to move on to some of the applications, now that we have sort of a shortcut method. Our network design questions, um, typically you're going to have to meet certain parameters. Um, those parameters could be uh, what subnet mask needs to support a number, given number of hosts or a given number of subnets. Or if it meets, if there are multiple subnet masks that meet a requirement, let's say we want to minimize or maximize the number of hosts or subnets. Um, and sometimes, like as I mentioned here, there may be more than one possible solution. Um, and you'll want to make sure that you can select all possible scenarios in that sort of a, or in that sort of a situation. So here's an example. Um, you might want to take the time to write this down and try to work it yourself, perhaps. So let's say you've been allocated Wichita State's Class B range 156.26. Uh, you want to subnet this space. You're required to subnet this space to allow up to 200 subnets and up to 100 hosts per subnet. So you need to 
create, you need to define a subnet mask that will allow up to 200 subnets and up to 100 hosts in each subnet. Um, so if you want to go ahead and give this a shot, I encourage you to pause the video and do that. Um, just because the practice is good, the math is good, you can compare and contrast with what I say here, and it helps you think a little bit about what you need to do in these network design questions. Okay, if you, hopefully you're joining us from a pause video, and um, I've got network design solution number one here. In this case, there's actually more than one possible situation, um, depending on how you, what your approach may have been. Uh, so don't uh, freak out if this isn't the solution you got. There's another one coming. So the way I decided to look at this the first time was uh, based on the subnet requirement. I need 200 subnets, and so what I will do is I will pick just enough bits to make that number of subnets. I will borrow just enough bits to cover 200 subnets. Well, the next power of 2 from up, up from 200 is going to be 256, which is 2 to the 8th. So that tells me I would need to borrow 8 bits. Again, 2 to the n greater than 200 best fits if n is 8. So um, in this case, I would borrow 8 bits um, from the subnet. And our subnet here was slash 16. So if I borrow 8 more bits, that puts me into slash 24 subnet mask. And this leaves me with the last octet, the last 8 bits, to be used for hosts. And 2 to the 8th minus 2 is actually 254, and that's much greater than 100, so our host requirement is also satisfied. Um, so the subnet mask, again, is going to be slash 24. We're borrowing 8 more bits, and we're going to have the subnets 0 .0, 1 0, 0, 0.0, 1.0, 2.0, uh, all the way up to 254.0 and 255.0. And this particular solution minimizes the number of subnets and maximizes the number of hosts per subnet. Now suppose we wanted to take the alternate scenario. So what if we wanted to look at uh, whether uh, trying to minimize based on the host perspective. So let's say we need 100 hosts and I want to just select the number of host bits based on that. Well my next power of 2 up from 100 is 128. So technically all I need are 7 host bits. And that means that to the n minus 2 greater than 100, best fit is n equals 7. And in this case, if I have 8 host, or pardon me, 7 host bits, that means that I will have 9 bits for subnetting. I would actually can borrow 9 bits for the subnetting. And this will actually, as you might be able to tell now, give me more subnets than in the previous solution. Um, and so if we have 2 to the 9 subnets, uh, that's going to be 2 to the 9th is, I believe, 512. That's much bigger than 200, so we meet our subnet requirement as well. This mask is going to be 255, 255, 255, 128. And you'll notice again, um, our subnets are going to go uh, like this. They're going to go dot zero. And then if you use this magic number property, uh, you'll notice that there are seven host bits in that last octet. Two to the seventh is 128. So our subnets are going to go in multiples of 128. And you can kind of see how that works here. It'll go 0 0.0, the slash 25, which is the 0 subnet, then 0 0.128, then 1.0, then 1.128, and then 2.0, 2.128, 3.0, 3.128, all the way up to 254.0, and 254.128, and 254.128 would be the broadcast subnet. And this particular solution, as I previously mentioned, minimizes the number of hosts and maximizes the number of subnets. And both of these solutions are equally valid, so based on any other possible design requirements, you may need to pick one over the other, or you may need to give both as an answer. Um, so here are some general tips for design questions. Um, be sure you remember when you're using host requirements to subtract two when you're looking at hosts. From the host perspective, uh, you need to make sure that you factor in that there is a broadcast address and that there is a network address that you have to account for. So for example, if you have a network that requires 108 or 128 hosts, you may think, well, that's great. I can just use seven bits. Not quite so fast because that 128 hosts does not allow for the extra network, or pardon me, yes, network and broadcast addresses that are needed, which will actually bring you up to 130 required addresses, which pushes you up to eight bits, not seven bits. Um, you also have to read the problem very, very carefully to determine whether or not you need to maximize host or subnet. And I've given you an example with each method. Um, the CC exam. Well, CCNA examples sometimes give you check boxes, and so again, more than one answer may be right. Make sure you pick all solutions. That just about wraps it up for this uh, brief subnetting practice. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and then I look forward to seeing you in the next presentation for this module.